Hello everyone, today I brought you 10 aquascaping tips and to present them I have some help. Our new channel manager, Bori. Love is love. She's really enthusiastic. Love is love. Adi Okay, I have my notes, as always, uh, just not to forget something. And let's start with the first one, which is when you are building your hardscape, um, make sure you have enough space for your filtration, either for an inner filter in like a nanocube set or the in and out flows of your external filter. It's really annoying when you build your hardscape, you're finished up and then you have no place to, to put the glassware or the in and out flows of your filter. Tip number two while we are at filtration is make sure that the filter hoses don't touch the inner, <laughs> the inside of your cabin. This is gonna be a fun video, I, <laughs> I feel it now. Uh, I don't know if you can hear it, but <laughs> it's a really strange noise. So uh, just make sure that your filter hoses don't touch the inside of your cabinet because you're gonna get a similar noise as I get now, as the filter is buzzing, because it really has a vibration that you usually don't hear, but if it touches the inside of your cabinet, the cabinet basically turns into a speaker and uh, it can get really loud and really annoying. The next one is for hardscapes and especially wood. If you have the time and the patience, it's uh, much better to soak your wood before you actually build. Or if you're gluing it and you make a more complex structure, then you can actually make the gluing and soak the wood afterwards. It helps you to get rid of a lot of the coloration that's in the beginning. And uh, also it helps you keep the wood underwater without using veining stones and so on, and without having to glue the wood pieces to the glass. And the next one is for hardscaping as well, um, and especially gluing. When you have uh, a piece of glue sticking out, when you, when you have to use it in a way that it actually stays visible, you can hide it quite simply with using some sand or some crushed pieces of active soil. You just make the gluing, make the connection, and then pour on some sand or crushed pieces of uh, active soil right on top of the glue, and it can make quite unnoticeable uh, the connection afterwards. Next one is about preparation again. If you're planning to use uh, a foil or vinyl on the backside of the tank, put it on before you start building. Most of us have our aquariums right up to the wall and if the hardscape is inside or the water is inside, it would be really heavy to, to pull it from the wall and, and have enough space to, uh, to put on the vinyl. So do that before you start building. It's much, much easier. Obviously it's not impossible to do it afterwards, but again, just help yourself. Number six, when you are connecting your filter hoses, especially if you have glass in and outlets, it's much easier to handle the hoses themselves if they are warm. So what we usually do is pour some hot water in a glass and then put the end of the hose in the warm water and it makes it soft. So it's much, much easier to, to put it on a piece of glass and it doesn't stick, it goes on much easier. Well, it should be mindful, it could break, but uh, it's much more difficult to break it. You've had enough? She doesn't speak English, so that's why it's boring for her. Filters, again, uh, priming the filter. Most of the new filters have some automatic priming solutions, like there's a button on top, which you push a few times and it sucks up the water from the aquarium and fills the filter itself. We usually don't use those, it's an option for error for the system. The more you use, uh, the higher the chance it fails someday and you can get some leakage. It's much better if you just put in the suction side into the aquarium and you just suck the other side, the, the outflow of the filter for just a second, obviously below water level. It's the same stuff. <laughs> Actually, this is what the primer button does. It creates uh, a momentarily vacuum in the system and that's what starts the water coming down into the filter and then it gets filled up and the water comes out on the other side. 
you can do this manually. Next one is about filling the tank itself after building. I, I've done this and I'm sure a lot of you done it as well. Uh, when you build your tank, you put in the hose, just open the tap and water pouring in and you have your whole soil coming up and all the plants coming up and so on. First of all, use some slow water. You need a tap and you need to be able to control the speed of the flow and I'm going to put you down, I think. You've had enough. Okay. Okay, now she's bothering the cameraman, so it's much easier for me, much harder for him. So yeah, first of all, slow water, use a single tap to control the speed of the water and you have to start really slow and once the water level rises, you can add flow continuously. But the best thing is if you can put the end of the filling hose either in clear sand, so if you have a full on sand front, you can just put the end in it and slowly start the water flowing and it's gonna only mix the sand in the front, which won't bother you later on. Or you put the end of the hose on a piece of hardscape, so a piece of wood, piece of rock, which can actually lead the water down slowly and uh, it divides the water uh, into smaller pieces and then it's actually slower as it hits the aquarium. Or if you don't have any clean um, hardscape parts because everything is, is planted and so on, just use a small bag. So the bag of the soil, uh, the, the bag the plants came in, something like that, just put it on top of the water level and uh, put the filling hose in that and that's gonna control the water hitting the aquarium as well. Tip number nine, once you have the tank running, you usually get to the step of turning on your lights and adjusting them. Nowadays we have a huge control over the lighting. You can dim them, uh, you can control the actual colors and a lot of people are afraid of this if they actually make it worse by adjusting. Obviously you can, you can create a type of light that's not useful for the plants. So for example, if you just pull up 100% blue and nothing else, obviously it won't work. My suggestion is in the Chihiro app and in most of the apps like these, you have some presets. Select the one that fits you the most, the one you like the most, and then make 5 to 10% adjustments to get exactly what you want. That should be enough to have a light that's perfect for you and still good for the plants. Once you have your tank running for over two weeks, it's time to get your first fish and shrimps into the tank. And uh, it's always a question how you actually put them in. You don't just pour them in the tank, obviously. That's, that's not good for them. They come in different temperature water and they come in different pH, different water hardness and so on. So they have to get used to your water compared to the water they came from the shop in. Best solution, grab a cup, pour in all the fish with the original water inside and then slowly add up your aquarium water, but really slowly, about 10% of the time and in about two or three hours in total, or even longer. This way they can get used to your water compared to the original one, and then you can actually put them in the tank and they won't get any shock from the moving. And also, if you know that you're gonna visit a fish shop today and you're gonna buy some new fish, it's recommended to turn off your CO2 and your lights that day. So in the morning before you leave home, just remember to plug them out. And then uh, when you get home, you introduce your fish and you reintroduce CO2 and lighting the next morning. So they have another half a day to get used to the water because obviously most fish are not kept in water with CO2 injection uh, in the shop. So it would be uh, a level too high for them what would be normally in your aquarium by the time you get home. And yeah, I have a plus one, uh, which is about suction cups. After some time, they get really hard and if they were transparent, they usually turn white. What to do? Obviously, buy new ones. That's the long-term solution. But if you can't get to the shop uh, in a couple days, what you can do is, like with the filter hoses, pour a glass of hot water or warm water and put in the suction cups. They get soft again. If they were transparent, turned white, then they're gonna turn transparent once again. 
this is a really good solution for those few days until you get new ones for it. I hope you like these tips. Um, I'm sure you knew some of them. I really hope you've learned some new as well. And that was it for today. Bori went to sleep in the other end of the room. So it's only me saying goodbye to you. See you next time.